Hi, I'm Amber of The Little Reeser House, where we celebrate the joy found in the little things of our family and our home. Back in the fall, I participated in the One Room Challenge, where I completely transformed our dining room over the course of eight weeks. And within that Greater Dining Room project, one of the projects that I tackled was refinishing an old secondhand dining table to fit into our space. I actually found this table a couple of years ago on our local buy and sell for 100 Canadian dollars, and I scooped it up knowing that one day I would love to refinish it. And today I'm going to share with you exactly how I did that, doing something that was completely new to me, which is using chemical strippers sanding it down, and then refinishing it in a new wood tone. If this sounds appealing to you, I hope that you'll join me in today's video. So let's get right into it. When I picked up this table, the legs were already removed for transport, so I don't have a full before shot of the table assembled for you. But as you can see, the tabletop is a pretty basic oval shape and comes with two leaves to extend the length. The legs have some really beautiful details on them, including a little brass circle plate that adds a lot of character. The existing finish was in great shape, but it had a very yellow undertone and a weird speckling in it. So I wanted to strip it down and try something new for our own space. To save myself from endless sanding, I wanted to try to strip off as much of the existing finish as I could using chemicals. I have personally never done this process before, so I made sure that I had all the proper safety equipment like nitrile gloves and a respirator and worked on this outside. I used this clean strip stripper, a doll scraper, a wire brush, and steel wool to actually work this product into the table and made sure to have everything else I needed on hand and ready to go before even starting. I worked in sections and started by generously applying the stripper to the surface using a chip brush. It almost immediately started to bubble the finish, but I allowed it to sit for the recommended 10 to 15 minutes before attempting to scrape it off. By the way, I referenced two different tutorials for this process that I have linked down below in the description of this video. Once the stripper had done its job, I took the dull metal scraper and gently ran it along the surface to remove the gunky finish. I scraped these bits into a scrap box and tried my best to work in the direction of the wood grain. I used the wire brush along the edge to scrape the finish off of the curved edges. And once I had made my initial pass, I added more stripper to a coarse piece of steel wool and used it to remove any of the excess. It required a few passes with the steel wool, but since there was only one layer of finish on my table, it came off fairly well with the chemicals. Once I had finished using the stripper, I neutralized it by spraying some clean water on a rag and buffing it across the surface. I have seen other people use mineral spirits or sawdust to do something similar, but the tutorial I followed said that a few passes with some water worked well as long as you allow the surface to dry out for a few days before sanding. As you can see here, the left side of the table has been stripped and the right side still has the original finish. It will require some additional sanding, but the effort saved in total sanding was definitely worth it to use the chemical stripper. Once I completed this process on the tabletop, I worked on other sections of the table one at a time, including the table skirting and the legs. This entire process is quite easy, but it does take some effort and some time. So I ended up doing the entire table over three different days, working in manageable sections at a time. The tabletop is solid wood, but the skirting is a veneer. So the stripper was definitely the right route to take on this. So I didn't have to risk sanding the veneer too much. The table legs were a little more difficult to strip, but I focused on using the wire brush and steel wool to scrape the finish out of all the cracks. I followed the same process of applying the stripper and then worked away at each leg, one side at a time. After giving all the pieces a few days to fully dry, it was time to finish removing any remnants of the original finish through sanding. It is best to use an orbital sander on furniture and work your way up to a finer grit sandpaper for a really smooth finish. Since the stripper had done a pretty good job of removing most of the finish, I started with a 150 grit and then did a second pass with a 220 grit. I used the orbital sander on the flat surfaces and then sanded the table edges and leg details by hand. I didn't want to risk over sanding and removing some of the curves and details of these areas. And when I finished, I wiped the entire thing down with a clean cloth to get the table ready for its new finish. I will leave a link to the full tutorial about exactly how I did this down in the description below. Mm -hmm. 
I'll admit that I was afraid to choose a new finish. I had gathered a few inspiration images but wasn't exactly sure what kind of wood my table was made out of and was afraid that I would hate what I chose and have to do all the stripping work again. Before applying the stain, I used a wood conditioner to ensure a smooth application. This product and the stain I was planning to use were both oil-based, so they pulled out a lot of the orange and red tones from my wood. This was the table with only the wood conditioner on it. I applied the stain, Minwax's Weathered Oak, which has a gray undertone to the entire table using a cloth so that I could build up the coverage using multiple light coats. I wanted to be really careful to keep the finish in the mid-tone range, not too dark and not too light. When I took a step back, I realized that my stain had taken differently to the different parts of my table and I instantly felt discouraged. I tried to trust the process and let the stain dry before applying another coat, but the more I added, the more obvious the different types of wood appeared to me. The tabletop seemed to be a red oak and was pulling out a lot of red tones, and the table legs seemed to be a poplar, and then the table skirting veneer seemed to be something entirely different. All right, quick update. I pulled the table in to the space to see if I liked it, and the answer is no, I don't like it. The original table finish that I did here, um, you can just see it's quite orange, quite red. It's a red oak tabletop, so the wood conditioner and the stain I used just really pulled that out, and the room I'm putting it in has quite a bit of green used in it, and so it's just really accentuating those red tones. It's just not what I'm going for. So I've been testing a few things here. These are the table leaves. On this one, I applied another stain on top called Aged Wheat. The Aged Wheat has a green undertone, so I thought, okay, this will cancel out some of the red. It did, but the tone is just generally too dark for what I was going for, so I don't think I'm gonna go in that direction. On here, I have tried to do the opposite, and I applied a really light wash. It's called Sun Bleached, um, but it just is way too light, not at all what I'm going for. And the white actually just accentuated the red oak and it reads pretty pink in person. Here I applied a stain called Flagstone. It's a really beautiful kind of lighter tone that still has some warm undertones to it. I actually quite like this on top and I think that's likely the direction I will take. But as one final step, I applied one here. Um, it's called Aged Barrel and it is more of a gray undertone but it actually just works quite nice on the red oak here um, and the stain I already had applied. Um, and so that actually is a pretty good option. It brings in a lot of the warm tones without getting too dark like this one does. I ended up applying a coat of Varathane's Early American to the table skirting and to the legs to see if I could get them looking closer to the red oak tabletop. Once I did that, I applied Varathane's Aged Barrel on top of everything to tone down some of the red. And by this point, my table was feeling a little bit like Frankenstein, but it all ended up working out. And with all said and done, the finish looks fairly consistent across all pieces. For the top coat, I decided to use Varathane's Diamond Finish Clear Top Coat in a matte finish. I wanted to be really careful to avoid a top coat that would yellow over time or that was too glossy and this particular one is water-based and less likely to yellow over time than an oil-based top coat. I applied it in the direction of the wood grain using a foam brush and once it dried, I lightly sanded it with a very fine grit sandpaper before applying a second coat. I allowed the table to sit and cure for a good handful of days before letting anything touch the surface. Before I reveal the final table to you, let's just remember what it looked like before I started this process. And this is what it looks like now. I am really glad I attempted this. There were moments when I considered throwing in the towel and ordering a brand new table, but when it was all said and done, I love the natural looking finish on this beautiful table now. I know we will make lots of memories together as a family around here, and that makes this entire project worth every effort. 
I hope you enjoyed seeing that process. If you liked this video, make sure you like it. Just know that every like, comment, share, subscribe, it goes a really long way in helping us on our YouTube journey. If you've liked a few of our videos, I hope that you also will join us over on our blog at littlereaserhouse.com. I post there twice a week, so there's lots of extra content there. Or you can subscribe right here on YouTube because I have so many great plans to put out more videos this year and I hope that you guys will join us. We appreciate you watching today's video and hope that you remember that the best things in life are often the little things like giving an old table a new life. Bye friends.